the meat chicks are coming next week so that means i gotta clean out this brooder and i'm gonna try to reconfigure it a little bit so i haven't really cleaned this out since in the last year and i had uh some other birds in here but what i'm thinking about doing is making these a little bit shallower and a little bit smaller and uh that way it will give me a little bit more clearance and i'm going to remove the plywood on this side um just because i don't want stuff to get trapped behind there and various things so i'll definitely reconfigure this i'm going to first take the air compressor and blow out all these cobwebs get that all down and then start disassembling so i got my n95 mask and then i got my air compressor with a little blower and i'm gonna blow this out so i got most of this blown out uh with the air compressor what I'm gonna do now is remove this plywood along here, get these boards out, and then I'll disassemble these, and then I'll re-try to figure out how I'm gonna configure it. Important thing is, I want the extension core, I mean the uh, power boxes close to where the heat lamps will be. Um, and if I make smaller, more brooder spaces, then that might be a problem. So I might have to run a, a, a new outlet um, line to here to be able to supplement the, the heat lamps. So uh, making some progress, continuing on. So now it looks a little uh, crazy in here. Uh, I'm still working to try to get this off, but I'm disassembling these and pulling them out. I'm thinking about maybe doing that uh, where you burn the wood uh, to make it... Uh, less rot resistant. Um, I may try that. Also over here, uh, this insulation did not work very good. So I think I'm gonna rip that out, put in, inlay a piece of plywood in there. Then I got this like one inch insulation, put it there and then put another piece of plywood over that. And then that will build up a little barrier. And then I'll actually be able to use that little space in there for the brooder area. So I'm still not quite sure what size I'm gonna make them, but I'll figure it out. I almost have the last two sections cleared out. And once I do that, then I should be able to get these plywood boards out and then can start cleaning this out the rest of the way and then building the new brooders. So it's the next day and I got all these boards cleared out. But as I notice over here, the floor seems a little bit more rotted than last time. So as I step over here, it starts sort of cracking. So I may just cut the floor back this way and then inlay with these boards. Oh, this stuff's way thinner than I thought it'd be. Oh, 
I got this part of the floor ripped up and really it looks like they just placed some scrap boards under there. So I might find some new scrap boards, place them down and then attach the floor to it. So I just learned something. I did not realize that there was a concrete floor underneath this. So really that wooden floor is just to lift the floor up and have it not be direct concrete contact. I mean, this is pretty far in. I would assume that it would go the entire way, especially since the hallway is uh, concrete. Um, but that like, the longest time I thought there was just a dirt floor and this floor was up on top of the dirt floor, but I guess not. But now clean this out. I also found out that this is concrete underneath here into the dirt floor. Um, and so that the floor is a little bit more supportive since I'm not, I don't have half lap joints or the ability to make them. Um, I'm using wider boards underneath so it should make the floor a lot more stable i'm going to start there and just uh continue this way with the boards that i have so i got some uh, boards placed i'm trying to just salvage boards that i have in the barn uh, so they will be <coughs> different thicknesses but as long as i can get entire width span that would be okay okay change of plans i didn't have enough uh lumber to fill this gap so i went to the hardware store and lumber is pretty expensive so i'm going to try to see if these uh wood fence pickets will work for the flooring now they're thinner than the other stuff but i might have enough that i could overlap them and make it pretty sturdy so we'll see we'll see how that works so these fence pickets are doing pretty good with the flooring now this isn't exactly square so i'm going to try to put one of these and then a smaller board or see if i have enough of the wider boards to fill in that gap um, and then i'm probably going to put some of the short pickets vertical um, just to protect that concrete there able to trim a board right there and it fits in nicely now i'm going to put the short pieces along the edge here so i have these short pieces here and i'm going to trim it off with the circular saw and hopefully the remaining pieces are long enough to come over here just trying to save some wood this is what the replaced floor looks like and i'm pretty happy with how those fence pickets worked out it doesn't need to be anything real fancy and since i added some more support braces um, there's not any real give with this flooring so it ended up being uh, fairly affordable each of these pickets were 237 or something like that um, and they worked out really well a lot cheaper than the regular lumber and then i may come back with just a small piece of trim down towards the bottom to keep that end from kicking out but uh yeah i'm really happy with how this turned out uh, as you can see i still have more to clean out uh but i feel good about having this floor fixed and then i gotta take care of these i'm probably going to just put a piece of plywood inside of there up a certain distance to try to block any cold air that might be coming through there and then I'll build out the boxes. I'm thinking of making it so that it spans two stud. So four feet and then come out a little ways and then um, have like a slanted roof thing. So uh, yeah, still got a lot of things to do before they come this week. So continue on. Okay, so now I have this cleaned out i'm noticing that these boards were ones that i replaced a while ago and they're raised up and i'm thinking of having the brooder come out this far and do two of those spans 
so it's uh, longer and skinnier and I need to replace those boards so I'm going to try to rip up that part and use the fence pickets so that the floor is similar height. So I'm pulling up these boards and these cross members are pretty well rotted so I'll replace what I can there. I now have these supports there and I'm kind of putting them in the middle. This is what the boards will really bite onto and then those will just keep them level. And so now to get the fence boards pickets cut and in place. That last cut was kind of interesting. Goes down and then a little jog, but I got a little squeezed in there. Now I'm gonna screw this down and then I'm gonna put some foam down in there to block off that hole. And then I should be good to start building the nest boxes. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna have to make this into a two-parter. Uh, so this was part one. Just a reminder that sometimes when you get into a project, it leads to another project, a sub project. Um, and in this case, I started to clean out the brooder room and I ended up having to replace part of the flooring in two sections. But uh, the extra work uh, pays off um, because instead of an entire season of dealing with the rotten floor, it's taken care of. Uh, so then I'll be able to just build the nest boxes next time. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the Farmer Brad YouTube channel. Until next time.